we could pay off? What if I could pay off? What if you could pay off your mortgage seven years early? That would be fabulous. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. We've created for you access to over 503 Inside Track episodes where we share insider tips, how to create harmony in life, how to have peace of mind when you're growing your wealth. And the great news is you can get access to this stuff from the home, from the office, or even on the go. Yes. So want to take a lot of money and effort to pay my mortgage off seven years early? Seven years early. That's if you don't leverage it again for something else. But let's just not get distracted because on this episode, we're, what we're going to learn is how we actually can, how you can actually pay off your mortgage seven years early. And to answer your question, Ken, it will not take you extra money. In fact, Overall, it will take you less money now and I'm listening. less time. Now, it will require some seeming insignificant small shifts in behavior, small mindset shifts, and small money choices so, that make a big difference. Right. So it's it's gonna. I'm gonna pay less money. Yeah. But in I'm big gonna picture. pay it sooner. Correct. Overall, it'll be less money and you will be paying some of it sooner. So one of the strategies that we we have used and we have coached hundreds and hundreds of clients, I wish we should we should record how many, but sometimes people do and they don't even tell us. Yeah, I mean, that's not like a real number, <laughs> right? When you've helped over 2,780 families, how many of those and then how many people that have listened to Life's Inside Track have taken the insight and then done the strategy. Or maybe if they read your book, The Wealth Formula, it shares the same strategy. So we've been sharing this for probably close to 30 years. So what you're saying is it's actually a formula. Yeah. It works every time right? you apply these things. It's foolproof. Even you couldn't mess it up. <laughs> I know you were I waiting. knew you were going there. I was speechless. I was waiting for it, waiting for it. <laughs> and, and then there it was. Bang. Even there it is. I could do it. Oh. And did. And so it's simple. The first piece, though, is mm -hmm. just make your payments. And maybe you're already doing this. Most people already do this. And if you're not doing this, you'll want to do this because you won't really notice the difference in the money going out, especially if you get paid bi-weekly anyway. Yeah, if you get paid bi-weekly as opposed to monthly, mm -hmm. you get paid monthly, this can hurt a little bit because on, <clears throat> on two months of the year, you're going to have three payments instead of two payments. But if you're paid bi-weekly, then you have a mortgage payment of a smaller amount every two weeks you just line it up so it happens a few days after your payday, and it's totally painless, easy to budget. Everything's great. And if you're self-employed, you've got to be really good with your money anyway, so that this is really a easy additional strategy to what you're already doing, mm -hmm. right? So you're just making bi-weekly payments on your mortgage rather than monthly payments. So, so that's I, tip so, one. Yeah, but let's uh, let's talk about the math behind that because Oh, please. Because what happens is if you make monthly payments, you make 12 payments. Correct. Which if you divide in half, which a lot of people go, well, if it's two weeks and it's half a month, but it doesn't quite work out that way, uh, that would be 24 payments. But when you do bi-weekly, it's every two weeks, which is 52 weeks in a year. Divide by two is 26. And 26 um, divided in half is 13. So it's like you made 13 monthly payments. And that's why it accelerates the payment of your mortgage. You pay more principal. Yeah. And thus, later on, there's less interest and it starts to accelerate and accumulate. It's like a snowball effect. It works faster and faster. So that's one. And then the other one is, and this means you got to be a little bit on the ball, so to speak. And that's create a little snowball fund working for you rather than against you. And that is to put money aside every month so that when at the end of the year, when you can make your annual additional contribution to your mortgage pay down, 
10%, 15%, 20%. It depends on your mortgage. So you actually care about your mortgage privileges when you're getting a mortgage just as much as you do the interest mm. rate. With a mortgage, that's prepayment privileges can be important, especially mm -hmm. if you're bonused once a year or something like that. Um, the other or way is instead of saving it up month after month, mm -hmm. if you find you have you know, an extra, whatever the amount of the mortgage payment is, you can do a double up payment. You can do mm -hmm. it once, you can do it every month or every two weeks until, they, until you tell them stop doing it, amount of money kind of thing. <laughs> Um, but that's a great way to accelerate. Now, you might take a mortgage from 25 years. If you do double up payments and you're doing the, the every two weeks payments, you might cut it down to half the amount of time. Yeah, we're saying seven years on average. We're saying if you don't utilize all these strategies, but you utilize most of these strategies, you're going to save about seven years on the length of your mortgage. If you use them all, oh my goodness. You decide. I mean, we paid our one off in 10 by really utilizing these strategies. Yeah. And the, the final strategy that worked really well is um, now, mind you, we did this strategy and there was maybe more urgency because interest rates were higher. We started at 10% and then it went down to 7%. And that's when we decided instead of having a 20 year mortgage, we would actually change it to 15 years. So we shortened the amortization because the interest rate went down. Our payment didn't, it went up like 70 bucks a month or something. It wasn't much. And then we, we applied some of the, you know, the, the one-time payments. And when it came to the end of that 15 years, we, we, we were done. Before. There was just a small amount of money. Like we yeah, we paid it off. And so we really chopped 10 years off of our mortgage. Mm -hmm. So shorter amortization, if you can afford the payment, it's a great way to go. Nobody says you have to take a 25-year mortgage. You could take a 10-year mortgage. Right. And so you just want to look at your payment. I mean, the, the rule of thumb is how do you live below your means, not at your means? Now, when we got into our first house and it was about 16% interest, that wasn't our first house. That was our second house. That was at 10%. Our first one was more like 16 and just not too many years before that. We're talking early 80s here. The interest rates were like crazy. They were on the either side of 20%. And so depending on what your interest rate is, it will obviously, you might want to have a longer amortization when it's a higher interest rate. And then rejig things when it comes up for renewal or keep a variable rate so that you can ditch that when the interest mm -hmm. rates drop. You know, what's really neat is that that paying every two weeks instead of monthly mm -hmm. when the interest rate is high makes a bigger difference than when the interest rate is low. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. So paying off your mortgage early can give you a fair bit of peace of mind and what it can do from my perspective, and again, we've watched hundreds of families do this, is get access to equity that's sitting in their house anyway now, and then they use it for investing. Yeah, not only have we watched them, we actually guided them. Well, yeah, <laughs> but we get to watch it too. We get to be part of the journey. It's so super exciting. So what would your counsel be, Ken, as people are listening to this going, I've got some more mm -hmm. cash in my house than I thought I did because I've been doing everything you've just recommended. Well, you may want to speak with us. Mm -hmm. um, you can give us a call. Or the other thing is also talk with your financial advisor and get a financial advisor who's not just getting paid because you buy you know, stocks or mutual funds or something. They get paid from that. You want someone that gives you a global picture of your portfolio, like what real estate assets should you have, what investments, and the whole shoot and match, so, so to speak. So thanks for being on the journey with us and growing wealth in wisdom and financially together. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward.